This is my 2020 Mercedes A35 AMG. So far on this build, we took delivery of the car. It was a late night delivery, but we got it sorted. The car wouldn't start, so I had to clear some crash data and I got the car started. However, we ran into a few issues where there was tons of oil leaking from the car and I found out that we had a broken oil cooler. We ended up sorting the oil cooler, but whilst we were doing that, I noticed that the chassis legs were badly bent. Now this car was advertised as a category in, so that was not in the plans. However, this is Salvage Nation, we're going to be keeping it moving and in this episode, I'm going to be pulling the chassis legs on the car and we're going to be getting this car looking 110%. But in the salvage game, nothing ever goes to plan. Guys, it's the next morning and I f***ed up. I f oh. I messed up big time. So guys, welcome back. Like I said in the intro, I'm sorting out the chassis legs on my 2021 Mercedes A35 AMG. How's it gonna go? This is the first time I'm doing it. Let's see. So guys, the plan of action is I'm going to anchor the car down to one of these anchor points on the floor. And then I'm going to anchor this device down to the other side where the bent chassis is. With everything anchored down, I should be able to apply some hydraulic pressure, pull the chassis back to the correct angles, the correct specification. And then I'm going to use a tram gauge to measure it all up, ensuring that everything is nice and true. So after setting everything up, this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's all anchored down, it's chained into place. And on this side, my guy there is just anchoring that side down. It's time to apply the pressure. And as it pulls the chassis leg, I need to give it a little knock because it creates these little kinks on that metal. So you need to give it a knock, straighten it back out and manipulate that metal back into the original position. Now I've sped it up here, but if you look closely, you can see the pressure is causing that entire front end to be manipulated back over to the correct position. Guys, come on, man. Where there's a will, there's a way. And I've definitely got a will to repair this car. And I want to do it all on my own. Um, have a look at the chassis leg now. Have a look at that. Oh my, it looks like a runway. Look at that. Shit. What do you think? Yeah? Nice. Yeah? Luminale. Little bit and it's going to be perfect. Exactly. Look at this side, guys. There was a big gaping gap there. You can't even see that. Let me get the light. There was a big gap right there. Now the gap is gone, but have a look at this side. We're getting there, we're getting there. Let's continue. Guys, come check this out. I'm so happy, you know what? When I was a kid, I used to watch, well, my granddad did, but I used to watch The A-Team. Who remembers, I think it's Hannibal, he used to smoke a cigar, he used to say, I love it when a plan comes together. Well, that's what I'm saying. Guys, I love it when a plan comes together. My plan actually worked. Have a look at this. So have a look here, I anchored the car right here. It's anchored completely, can't go anywhere. I use this pulling device, hooked it up here. Hey guys, have a look at that. If you remember, this used to be all the way over here. It actually went and it broke the original one that was on the car. That's why we had to replace this oil cooler. This is now back in the correct position. Have a look at that chassis leg. Boom, have a look at that one. Boom! Have a look at the front end. It hasn't gone walkabout anymore. It's returned home. It's not the end of the story though. Um, I've got a tram, I believe it's called. I've got a tram gauge, which I'm gonna go double check, make sure that it's all squared, but I'll do that tomorrow. Have a look, outside is dark. Everyone's getting ready to go home. But if you look now, there's clear daylight between the fan and radiator assembly and the face of the engine and all of these coolant hoses. When we first started the car, as soon as the fan kicked on, it was chafing up against this hose. Now I can put my whole hand in there and there's enough space. That's the way it should be. Even the oil filling port, that was kind of chafed up against that like that, no space. But once the front slam panel goes back in and these go into the correct positions, that's gonna hold it all forward and we're gonna have that space. So what I wanna do quickly before I go is plug the fan back in, switch the car on and just confirm everything I just said. Guys, the car is running, I'm gonna leave it to warm up and check the fan. But another thing that I wanna do is, now that I've got the space 
in this area. I want to put back the air box. When the car is moving in and out of the garage, I don't want anything to fly in and potentially damage the engine. So I'm going to get this air filter box back on the car. Yeah. Let's do that. Let the car move. So guys, that metal bracket that broke the oil cooler is actually for the airbox. So I was able to pop that in, pop the ECU in, and as you can see, everything is looking nice and clean. Have a look at that. So guys, have a look. The fan is working, it's super quiet. I'm super happy. I've got a tiny water leak. I've explained that to you, I'll get that pump, I'll swap that out, but this car is already taking shape and on that positive note, I'm going to head home, I'll see you guys in the morning. Alright guys, so it's the next day, last night we made a ton of progress on that car behind me. What I want to do now is I need to strip down a little bit more and do a bit more pulling, but first I just got a very important package in the post, which is that replacement water pump. I want to be running this car as safe as possible, so let's go change that water pump and then we'll continue. So here's the replacement pump. This should be a light for light part. Um, all I need to do is, as you can see, is come with the electrical connector. The electrical connector on the car is sadly damaged. So what I'm gonna do is cut this one off, join it all up, get it all connected, and then I can go ahead and swap this out. So let's get started with that. So replacing this pump is dead easy. All you have to do is pop the clips out, remove the hoses, and then follow the same steps in reverse with the new pump. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just testing the wiring and I'll explain a little bit more right now. So guys, new pump in place. I've joined up the wires but I'm not going to solder them yet. I've got all my soldering stuff here. I want to fill it up with water, start the car and see if I can hear it running first. I've matched the colours and the position of the colours from the original loom. It should work um, but I like to do a test before I go ahead and solder everything, tape it up and make it look all pretty. So let's get that done. Guys, I can feel the vibration, I can feel the pump spinning, so that should be a goal. I'll leave the car to warm up a little bit and I'll get those wires taken care of. Like I said at the beginning, nothing goes to plan. Check this out. Guys, it's the next morning and I f***ed up. I f oh, I messed up big time. Sorry for swearing, I'll probably beat that out. Last night, as you saw, I installed the water pump down there. I was doing the wiring and I nicked a fuse. So I had to come up here, open up this fuse box. I have a probe tester. So I had my positive connected here and negative connected to the body of the car and I was testing all the fuses. I was in the way and Akil came to me and said, oh, D, you need to move this car, I need to bring one car in. So in my haste, I had the engine ECU out of the holder and as I was just moving stuff around, just trying to be quick, a stupid mistake, silly mistake. The engine ECU just slid across made contact with the plus. Now these engine ECUs are earthed. So if I was to put a probe on anywhere on this body, it should come up earthed. As soon as it made contact with the plus of the battery, I saw a big spark and the engine cut. <sighs> it's not the end of the world, but it's gonna hit me in the pocket. Let me show you exactly what I found. So guys, the ECU is meant to be here. Um, this air box was actually in the boot. So that's one of the things I was doing off camera. I was installing this air box back into the proper location because I had to adjust the mount at the bottom. If you remember, I straightened it up. But anyway, I had the ECU like this. This is my little tester, where is it? This is my little power probe. You can see negative goes there, positive goes there, but it's only got insulation on one side. So this side is given a positive signal. And literally, if I show you, when you give it a positive, when you touch any positive, you can see it lights up red. And if you touch any negative, it's meant to light up green. Have a look. You can also give positive and give negative. If I touch this, this is meant to be lighting up green. It's no longer getting an earth. That's what I realized. So I checked all the fuses in here. Um, I'm not sure if one of the relays might be gone, but worst case scenario, and it's looking that way because the engine is not starting. I'm getting a ton of codes to say that the combustion engine's signal is missing. This is the ECU for the combustion engine. So this is not on the network any longer. 
Oh man. The cost of one of these is 900 quid and then I'm gonna have to get it programmed to the car. It's just like, it just blows the budget off this build. Like this build was going so nicely, so happy, so gassed. Everything was getting done, everything was getting sorted and it's a silly mistake on my part. So I take full responsibility and that, that just adds to my frustration. Um, uh, I'm gonna show you what, basically the car's not starting. It's, it's not starting, it can't find this. Um, I'm gonna try to do some more diagnosing this morning, but if the car's not starting, I'm not even bothered to continue on the chassis. Like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, sorry guys, I'm just, my mood is just off, but check this out. I don't wanna drag on. So, keys in the car, obviously you've seen this car start many a times. Now, you press the brake, press the button, nothing happens, the car does not start. Um, yeah, it just doesn't start. So guys, I'm gonna put the camera down and I'm gonna try to check some more fuses, check the wiring. I even removed all the screws from the ECU, but it's all glued and yeah, I have to take it apart. I wanna see if I can see any visible damage in that ECU, but it's not starting. And yeah, the car's just bricked completely. Two hours later. All right, you guys, so I'm still not smiling, but I've got good news and I've also got bad news. I've just spent the last two hours, two hours, right? That trying to diagnose what could be wrong. I'm, I'm trying to assume, I'm trying to stay positive that it's not the ECU that I've just randomly blown, just like that. And I found, I've been using my Pro, and I've been focusing on all the positive power. So all the fuses, all the wiring, I've tried to test the relays, focusing on the positive power. But like I said before, the ECU should be grounded and it's not giving me any ground. So what I did, just randomly, like Aki was walking past and I thought, well, if it's not getting ground, what would happen if I give it ground? Have a listen. So, you can see, I'm gonna give it ground now. Can you hear that? You can hear the ringing, and you can see the turbo just moved. So that's the ignition. So it looks like if I give it ground, it's coming on. I'm gonna get a bit of wire and tether this ECU to the ground and see if the engine starts. If the engine starts, at least I know the ECU is okay. Um, it's still got all the information inside but I still need to figure out why it's lost its earth. But that's a positive, that is a positive. So guys, keep your fingers crossed. If any of you guys have any information or have any ideas of what it could be, let me know in the comments down below because I am stressing, believe me. So guys, I've got just a bit of standard wire. Um, I've connected it to this earth point and I've put one of the ECU screws in. Let me go switch this off. So I'll just screw this into the body of this ECU, and this is giving the ECU earth. I shouldn't have to do this, it should be getting the earth from within the wires. So I'm hoping that it's maybe a relay, or if you guys know, just leave a comment, let me know. Okay, and so that nothing else happens, I'm gonna put this in the correct position, and I'm gonna leave it there, because it's just silliness, man. Like, I shouldn't, I should have just done it properly the first time, Ugh, but I was rushing. So look, ECU's in place, I've got it earthed, I've got it tethered to the body of the car. So fingers crossed. Let's go see if the car starts now. It did make a noise, you did hear it, so it should start, but let's see. Alright you guys, so as you can see the engine is running, but let me show you what happens if I remove that tether that I made to the ground. You see? That is still scary. If any of you guys think you know what could be the problem, and listen to the fan. As soon as I remove the tether, this happens, engine cuts out. That's exactly what happened when it, when it shorted last night. So yeah, please, let me know. But for now, I'll tether it, I'll keep it tethered, that way we can move the car in and out of the garage. Let's continue to pull the chassis. All right, you guys, so, sorry to keep talking, but it's actually about a week later, and I'm, I was so gutted about this ECU situation that I just, I just parked the car up, 
I left it, I cracked on with other things and I've come in with new energy today. I need to continue to strip down this area, strip down the lower support for the radiators because that's adding tension when I'm pulling. And then I can do the final bit of pulling and hopefully these chassis legs are gonna be 110%. So forgive me if my energy is a little bit off. I've disconnected the tether because I don't want any more accidents and to move the car out, I just need to reconnect this tether um, to the earth and get that out. I'm pretty sure that I've blown something in that ECU. Um, I've checked everything, all the fuses are good, all the relays are good. I've even tested all the pins, I'm getting ground and I'm getting live in the pins where I'm supposed to get ground and live. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So guys, we have to keep it moving. I need to continue with the build. So I went ahead and I started to remove all of these giant bolts. These bolts secures the front crash bar to the chassis rails. So once that was out, I was able to get that out of there. And then I went down below and I started to remove all the nuts and bolts that holds that radiator support into place. I repeated the process on the other side and as you can see the radiator is becoming a little bit loose. I went ahead and cleaned up a few bits and then I noticed there was still something holding it in place. So to gain access to this secondary bar that was holding everything together, I had to remove the wheel, remove the splash guards and that gave me access. Have a look right here, I'm going to remove that bar right now. Whilst I was in this area, I noticed that this little bracket had popped out. Obviously, when the chassis leg was bent, that would have dislodged that little bracket there. So I went ahead and neatened up all of those wires. And with all of that done, I've finally isolated both chassis legs. Alright you guys, so I've removed the radiator carrier, the front crash bar and the connecting ends right there. And the reason for that is I really want to isolate the two chassis legs. And if I just show you this, this is all bent out of shape, but it was still connected to the chassis legs at the top right there and obviously at the bottom. So it was given a lot of tension, which was making it difficult to get those really, really fine tuned pulls in. So now that I've isolated the legs, I should be able to hook it back up and it should be a lot more easier to pull. So I just wanted to show you that. Another thing as well is when I did my assessment, have a look at this crash bar. This crash bar is actually in good condition. This crumple bar here, this is actually made to crumple. So this is actually untouched and this one is damaged. Have a look at that. So in this box right here, it's all about working smarter and not harder. And I really want to save a bit of cash because trust me, with this ECU issue, I'm going to need to save as much as I can on this bill to keep it under budget. Let me swap this out. That goes on like so, light for light part. And then this complete front crash bar can go back on the car. The only damage to that crash bar is some aesthetic damage right here, which is not a problem. Once again, guys, it's all about working smarter, not harder to remove this portion of the front crash bar. It's dead easy, it's two giant bolts. Once those were out, I went ahead and I test fitted the new part, popped them back in, and then I just had to torque it all down. With the part replaced, I went ahead and refitted the front crash bar. This is because anytime I'm pulling, I wanna pull both chassis legs together. So have a look here, you can see it's actually gone in quite well. We're just off by minimal margins, guys, minimal margins. Alright guys, so this is where we're going to wrap up this episode. In this episode we had some ups and we had some very silly downs on my part and I take full responsibility and I'm still kicking myself about it. However, we're keeping it moving, you guys are here for it. We managed to strip down the front end, we managed to fix up a lot of those wires, get them back in place. I managed to remove the lower radiator support and we managed the all important pulling of the chassis leg. So I still think today was a success even though I made that silly mistake. Um, as you can see, I've got tons of deliveries for the front end of the car that came in this morning. So I'm going to continue working. I'm going to try to reassemble the front end. I want to get the front slam panel on, new radiator support on, headlights in. But you guys are going to have to wait until the next episode. This one has ran on quite a while, so I think this is a nice spot to cut it. In the next episode, we're gonna pick up exactly where we left off and I hope you're here for it. If you wanna see how we get on, make sure your bells are on, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let's put Salvage Nation on the map. It's free, it is free. If you wanna see how we're getting on outside of YouTube, follow me on Instagram. And if you wanna support me and the channel, why don't you become a Patreon member? It will really, really help myself and it will help me to make better content for you guys. But anyway, enough of that. This is where we're gonna head off, so like I always say, keep it moving, and I'll see you in the next one.
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that, why don't you check out one of my previous videos on the left, there's plenty in the playlist. And if you want to know more about the Salvage game, why don't you become a member of Salvage Nation and I'll be there to guide you along the way. And don't forget you can follow me on Facebook, TikTok and Instagram if you want to get an inside scoop before YouTube.